Hi, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at building a master effects rack, which we can use for transition effects, a little bit of DJ style stuff. We have this on a separate channel to the master and we can blend between the main output and the master effects as we wish. We can set up um, sort of snapshots of our effects, set them up in advance and then transition into them. We'll have a look at all that. Let's just have a quick list and then we'll have a look at how, it's, uh, how it functions and finally how you can put this rack together yourselves. Okay, so let's just have a look then what we have. Um, maybe I'll turn this down for a second so we can hear what's going on. Now I've set up Ableton to incorporate a fader here. It allows you to switch between this channel here, the master effects channel, which we have our effects rack on, and the main channel here. So I'm not going to explain in this video how to set this up. I've set this up in a previous video. I'll leave a link up here and a link below where I explain how you can create the submix, how you can introduce the fader, how you can then transition between A and B. Effectively, what we're doing with the fader here, we have a submix. And if I transition here, the right side of the fader is B, the left side of the fader is A. So when I'm on the left side, I get everything coming through here. And when I'm on the right side, I get everything coming through whatever effects are on this side of the rack. So as I say, I won't go into this in detail for, for the sake of brevity for this video. Have a look yourselves how this is set up. It's not too difficult. I just want to concentrate on what we've got going on here with the the effects rack here. So I'll, I'll go over to the right side here, coming through on the master effects channel here. Um, basically what we have is a series of effects that allow us to introduce, yeah, effects to the, the main output of our mix. We have a redux, a drive, a delay, delay feedback, filter, resonance. Etc. I set this up for, for push, push three, so that on the, the first page of push three, I have these um, controls here, easily available. If I want to go to deeper and adjust some of these, I can go to the second page on push and adjust them here. Um, but you know, you can use it here with a MIDI controller, control M, I believe Command M on Mac would allow you to map these things to any kind of MIDI controller. So you're not re required to have push to, to use this. Okay, so what do we have anyway? We have um, a Redux here, let's open it up. We have a whole series of effects. We have a Redux, followed by an overdrive, followed by a delay, auto filter, a reverb, then at the end of the chain, we have a compressor with some light compression, um, a limiter to make sure we don't have any sort of crazy volumes, and a utility. That's what the chain is made up of. I'll go into more detail when we do the build. Effectively, then, you have um, control over these effects here, some basic control, reverb, Let's maybe have a listen to them individually. Now perhaps we can turn off um, this. There we go. So we have um, we have our control of a Redux for changing the sample rate, bit rate. Turn off the drive. Turn off the delay. So we have a Redux. We can disassemble the sample, the audio. 
the bit depth, the sample rate. We have a drive. Let's have a look at the drive circuit here with a filter so we can adjust it. the tone of the drive, the amount of drive, where the frequency of the drive affects and the width of the drive. So we can narrow it down to a very thin band of frequencies and move that through the frequency range. Some controls over that. We have um, a delay here, which we can control here. We can control over the feedback, the delay amount. We can also control the filter on a delay, it's same as with the overdrive here. We can limit the, the, the range or the frequencies and move through the frequencies to emphasize where we want the delay to be or we make it a very wide delay. So we have some control over how the, how the delay works. Okay, then we have, um, turn that down. Then we have a filter, let's have a look at that. Which is set to high pass, but we can morph between high and low pass. So we have some nice control there. And finally we have a reverb. And we can then set these macros up to create a sound we like. And then we create here a new um, snapshot effectively. And we can make a whole series of presets with different styles that we've generated, which we can then use to blend between here. Or you, can, you don't have to use this, this blend mechanism. You just drop this on your master effect channel or wherever you want. And, in Ableton, you can put it on an instrument if you want. I've called it the Master Effects Rack, but you could put it anywhere. And then you can switch between your your different presets. Maybe put this back on. And uh, tweak away at will. Okay, as I say, very simple concept. The, um, how you set up this project, as I say, I've linked to another video. If you're a patron, then I will upload this entire template, this entire project, including how this is set up. Um, yeah, let's have a look then how it's put together. So you'll need an audio effects rack, you find those audio effects, audio effect rack. Just drop one in here, drag it into here. I've kept my original rack as always. Um, if you click on this little icon, you'll then be presented with the macros. Yours will be unnamed, but as I say, I've kept mine to speed up the video. We'll need all 16 macros here, macro controls. So once we've got that done, we can drop in the effects we're going to use. First one will be the, the Redux. Just drop that into the rack. Then we have an overdrive. A delay. An auto filter. Reverb. There, then we have a compressor and the limiter. Finally, the limiter. I mentioned at the beginning of the video I had a utility at the end here, but that was actually a mistake. I realized when I came to make the video that I'd left the utility in when I was setting up the rack. I didn't actually have a use for it, so I've removed that. So these are the these are the components we need in here, the effects we need in here. 
then we just have to do a little bit of setting up. We'll set up the compressor first. I say you can set these up how you want, but this is the way I've set them up for, for my usage. I selected here on the attack quite a, a long attack time, 20 seconds, 20 milliseconds, sorry. 20 milliseconds. Uh, this I left alone. I selected a peak filter, a peak compressor, sorry. And I think that's everything. So we can close that, but we can move on. The reverb. I set up the reverb with a low cut here. Put the, activated the low cut. I changed the size to 125 and the decay to 2 second. So that's 2000. 2 seconds. I think that's all I changed on that. Um, so the auto filter, we need to select here the morphing filter and then we'll come and map this in a second nothing else to change there the delay is set to one the rate and feedback we will map and then what else do we have we will come and we'll map all these things then the overdrive I think the overdrive is just uh, simply a mapping, and this is also a mapping. So we can just map this very quickly. I'll set the, I'll leave the screenshot as, at the end as always, so that you can come here and see the macro settings. Let's um, do the Redux first then. So we have the sample rate, I'll map here, the bit rate here, and then the dry wet, I'll map here. That's that set up. Then we have the overdrive. We can close that one. The overdrive, we have the drive. The drive tone. We have here the drive frequency and the drive width here. And then finally the dry wet, we map up here. Close that one. The delay, we have the feedback. We can map up here. Then we have the dry wet, which we'll map up here. And finally, we want to have this filter frequency, delay filter, and the width of it here, we'll map those. That one's finished. The auto, auto filter, we just have the frequency here. The resonance, where are you? Here. And this low high, which is our morph, here. Um, anything else? I think that's okay. Then we have that finished. Finally, the reverb. Well, the reverb, I just, I was limited with control, so I just went simply for the dry wet amount here. And I think you find that, oh, one, one thing we have to do as well, which is very important with the drive, I used a little trick here where I map the input gain for the limiter I also map to the drive control. So that as we increase the drive, we reduce the main volume, the output volume, so we can balance it out in an automatic way. We'll set that up with the, the values in a second. Okay, so I think that's everything mapped. Just have a look, I think that's good. Okay, so all we need to do is punch in here a few uh, constraints. Let's just have a look what we have here. That stays the same. The filter stays the same. The drive width stays the same. I think it's really just this one here, the drive, which I restricted to 50%, so you don't get 100% drive. And for what I mentioned before, the drive wet, the dry wet here, 
excuse me, I've made a mistake there, that should be 100. The dry wet is limited to 50. And then the drive itself, I set at zero. This is for the limiter here. It says drive, but it's actually the limiter. And minus three decibels. So as we increase this drive, we're effectively, let's see if we can see that. Yeah, we're, as we increase the drive, we're reducing the limiter here. So that gives us a bit of an offset for our drive. Um, just anything else? Delay filter, I actually restricted this to 4,000, four kilohertz, and left that one at 300 for the delay filter. Feedback I left at 95, that is 16. Okay, so that is everything set up. Um, let's pop out of there then, close these. Um, you have here then save. If we save that, it'll go into a user library, uh, presets effects, effects racks. You'll find this saved in there. Then you could drop it into any, any um, project you want to use it with. The Snapshots here, I've left my original snapshots. Let's see if this works now. You just create a, set the macros how you want and then create a new snapshot, then save it again. Um, let's try and see what we've got. See if it works. That's the dry signal. Let's try this. Base. Okay, so everything seems to be working. I say, if you're interested in how this works, check out the other video, link below. And um, as always, hope someone can make good use of this. Enjoy your day and see you in the next one. Thank you.